I wanted to talk a little bit about E3 today because uh, some interesting revelations have come about during this year's E3 and now that the week is pretty much over and uh, everybody's winding down I felt like you know going over some of the things that we learned from E3 and some of the things that I'm looking forward to the most so uh, when it comes to which um, which conference won this year I think the answer is pretty clear Nintendo won this year's con conferences they, they I mean I hate saying like the, the one one console or one uh, company wins the conferences this year like no it's not a fucking battle nobody's winning or losing it's just you know which one had the best conference and in that case I think Nintendo had the best conference and you know it's easy for them to have the best conference because they have a digital conference that's basically just a video that they've been working on for m probably months now so they've had a lot of time to work out the finer points of this video and make it all as, you know, clear and concise and beautiful as they want to make it. It's like, one is a film production, one is a live play, if you're going to compare the two. So, it's a lot harder to do live stuff than it is to do, like, a film production, because film production, you have plenty of time to get all those... Uh, ums and uhs and errors out of there essentially so yeah the uh, Nintendo had a lot more time and a lot more effort put into theirs and because of that and because of other reasons they fucking won this year but I mean obviously it's not just that that just you know it, it helps out because their conference didn't have to be an hour and a half long in order to prove their point and their point was, we've got a lot of great games coming out in the next few years for the Wii U. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know if I can say I want all these games, but I kind of wanted to say that I want all these games. Um, just the fact that they're doing a game for Toad is fucking awesome to me. I never thought I would see the day when Nintendo would finally give more love to their, you know, other characters. I'm wondering now, when are we going to see the Shy Guy game? Or when are we going to see, uh, you know, a game of some of the other lesser characters that are the, the Koopa Troopas that are uh, uh, not really discussed very frequently or given a lot of uh, play in the Nintendo games because I've been wanting stuff like that for a while I've been wanting them to test the waters to try new things like that and I'm seeing it and that's fucking awesome people are saying apparently it's um, a, apparently the game is based off of a few levels in Super Mario 3D Land for the Wii U or something like that where you get to play as Toad um, have no idea, have never actually played that game yet, but I'll take your word for it, and doesn't really matter to me if it is based on that. Um, it's just really cool that Toad, even Captain Toad, is getting his own game. So on top of that, what, uh, some of the other games that I saw that I really liked and I really wanted were, of course, Legend of Zelda... Which is not even have a release date. It's not probably coming out anytime soon. I mean, I would say 2016 at the earliest. Probably late 2016. I mean, if they aren't announcing it uh, with a release date now, then you can bet that it's not going to be anytime soon. But, very excited for that game because it looks like a... Uh, 
open world, oblivion kind of uh, Legend of Zelda game. Now, what I like about that, I mean, people have been comparing it to Skyrim, comparing it to other open world games that are massively open world. And there are a lot of people who are saying, well, that's probably not going to happen because Nintendo. And I, I agree entirely, actually. You know, chances are that although he says you can go all the way into the mountains in the background, if you actually look at those mountains, they don't look like they're that far away. So although it will be, <clears throat> I'm sure, an open world, what I'm not sure about is whether or not that open world is going to be huge. So when I see that, I'm thinking to myself, maybe it won't be as huge as like a Skyrim or an Oblivion, but on, it'll be like those games on like a slightly smaller scale, so to speak. And it'll be in the world of Legend of Zelda, which is goddamn beautiful. So I don't have a fucking problem with that at all. I think that's fine. It's fucking perfectly fine. Uh, although they do have time in the next few years to work on that and make it even bigger. So, who knows? At this point, who really knows? But I'm very excited for that. I'm also excited for uh, Yoshi's Woolly World. Because it looks very much... Like, I mean, nobody's really talking about this, but if you look at the fucking gameplay style, it looks very much like uh, Yoshi's Island gameplay style. And sure, you don't have a tiny little Mario on your back, but if you look at like the reticle and the fact that you're basically shooting eggs that are not eggs but are instead yarn balls this time around, I mean, it's Yoshi's Island in the form of yarn. Like, I don't have a problem with that at all. I think that's fucking awesome. And the game looks like it's going to be fantastic. I really want to play this game. I mean, I want to play Epic Yarn. I've never been able to play it yet. I haven't ever, have not been able to play that yet. But, you know, um, I also want to play this new game now. And another one that looks really interesting to me. looks like it could be, like, the new hot thing is Splatoon. Splatoon, at first I thought, well, that's kind of silly, that's kind of goofy, but then I saw the, you know, I saw it. I saw the, this is going to be the hot new IP. Because if you look at how the game works, it just looks insanely goddamn fun. It's a game where you're playing against each other kind of like Smash Brothers, only uh, in that it's a competitive game. Only instead of like... Okay, and it's got like this arena FPS thing to it, right? Which a lot of people like, like, uh, you know, PC gamers even. This is a game that can get PC gamers to buy a Nintendo Wii U. That's pretty significant in my eyes. So anyway... This game, you combine the elef el elephants, the elements of the, you know, the FPS that I was talking about just a second ago, and, you know, the competitive nature of, like, a Super Smash Bros. kind of game, and it has almost this really Super Nintendo feel to it, which is to say that it reminds me of games that I played with my friends on the Super Nintendo when I was younger games that were all about having fun, being competitive, but having fun. In a way, it kind of also reminds me of like that level in the uh, Super Mario Kart where you're playing against your friends, and you got to kind of pop the balloons. Uh, obviously, you don't pop the balloons in this case, but that kind of innovative, different kind of gameplay where you're going around trying to get your friends... Um, and you're doing it with ink, essentially. This is ink, but it's, you know, the, the intonation, I think, is that it's um, like paintball, essentially. But the game just looks insanely fun. And I cannot wait to check it out because, I mean, yeah, sure, these aren't Nintendo characters that were a, a, a 
aware of, but they are characters that I think we will become aware of, and I think they might even they even have the chance to become like a part of the Nintendo family, so to speak, because it really does look like that kind of game that's not a, not only going to be a system seller, but it's going to like you know change the way people think about these kind of games, make them realize that you can have a game where you're being competitive where you don't necessarily have to kill everybody else, you just shoot them with paint. And the fact that you can go through the paint to move faster, and all the strategy, strategy that exists there kind of reminds me of the kind of strategy that you have to take with the Super Smash Brothers game, or stuff like that. And it just, it looks like it could become incredibly deep and incredibly fun. It's exactly what Nintendo needed to come out with. I can't wait to see what that what happens with that. Uh, as for the other games, the Kirby game, the uh, Kirby Claymation game, as it were, looks all right. I I might be interested in checking that out. As I mentioned in the uh, watching of the conference with Eric, I feel like that game is going to be. Uh, very much like the Cran Physics game that I played recently on the computer, downloaded and played it and beat it. Um, it's a great game. You basically use Cran drawings to get a ball or something from one point of the uh, level to the other point of the level. And it becomes increasingly difficult over the different levels. Um, so when I saw Kirby, a little round ball, and you have to draw, essentially, a line to get, or something, to get him where he needs to go, I saw Cran Physics. You need to see, if, if you don't know what I'm talking about, go find a video of Cran Physics. Compare it to a video of this Kirby game, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. It's practically the same fucking game. And that's not a bad thing, because Cran Physics, as I said, I played it through to the end and beat it. It's a fun game, and I've played it twice. It's fun. It's interesting. Um, I can't wait to check that game out, because I know that's going to be fun. What I really wanted to hear from Nintendo were things that I knew probably weren't going to happen. But like I mentioned several times, I was pretty sure that they were going to do something with a phone because they've had like these, yeah, you know, they've had these leaks of these uh, plans that they've had for phone something or other, and they didn't even mention that at all, which was a little bothersome because I'm thinking to myself, well. You know, I what I really want is for them to start selling some of their older games on Android. They're going to make tons of money if they do that. You know? I mean, selling it to just the limited platform of your uh, 3DS or Wii U or whatever, it limits how many sales you can get. There are a billion people who have Android devices that can play your games. All right? Instead of uh, letting the ROM market on the Android market work its way through, how about you just nip that in the bud and let people buy your games directly from you? That's, that's all I'm saying. That's what I wanted to see in terms of that. I also would love to see an official Animal Crossing game for the Wii U. I would, I'm sure they're working on it. I would love to see uh, uh, a, uh, as people have mentioned online in the past few days, a Pokemon game for the Wii U um, that is like an open world, kind of in the same uh, sense of the Zelda game, would be like an open world Pokemon game where you can catch all the Pokemon from all the previous generations. That's something that I really fucking want. And a lot of Pokemon fans want. And I know that one of the creators has come forward and has said that it's kind of ridiculous for you to request something like that. But I don't care if it's ridiculous. This is what the fans want, bro. 
I mean, I know you know this is what the fans want, and I know you know that it's fucking hard to do that, but work on it, because you would make so much goddamn money, you don't understand. So, yeah, I those are the things that I wanted to see that I didn't see, but it didn't matter to me. Because what I did see was still enough to make to convince me that I need to get a Wii U. I don't know when I'm going to get it, but I'm getting a fucking Wii U now. Um, I also want Mario Kart 8, of course. But, yeah. It's besides, that's not, doesn't matter. Blah. Anyways, now that I've spoken about Nintendo for fucking ever, let's talk about Microsoft. Because, um... They had the worst show this year, but their show was not as bad as it was last year, and it was not that bad overall. Um, I felt like with what they tried to do, with what they tried to do was very similar to what uh, Sony tried to do last year, focusing mostly on games, saying coming out and saying you're focusing on games and that games is what you care about right out of the Sony playbook from 2013. Now, that's not necessarily a problem, because that's exactly what I wanted to see. I wanted to see the games that Microsoft was coming out with that were going to make me want to get an Xbox One. And, quite frankly, they didn't show me much that I wanted. I mean, I'm not into uh, Halo, so when they talked about that, wasn't interested. The only things I were interested in really... Well, that's an interesting noise. The only things I were interested in were uh, Sunset Overdrive, which looks incredibly fun. If there were more than this, just that game on the, on the Xbox One, then I'd probably be tempted. But that's the only one that's like, particularly exclusive to the Xbox One that I saw that I was like, oh, I really want to check this out. Project Spark looks pretty interesting, but from what I've heard from uh, people who are trying out the beta or whatever on the Xbox One, it's not that good. Or at least so far, it's not that good. And I thought it was really shitty that they put Conker in there, just kind of threw him in there instead of giving him his own game. Especially on the Xbox One, you can do an X, you can do a Conquer game on the Xbox One that would be fucking phenomenal and would sell so many fucking people on the console. I, you had the fucking perfect chance and you ruined it. The Fable game, I mean, as evidenced by the fact that I didn't even know what kind of game it was, I thought it was a fucking RTS. I, it's not, it's not up my alley. I want a Fable game more like the original Fable games, only bigger. Like, give me the first, the game, kind of Fable game I want is like the first game, but bigger. And I, by that I do not mean change things around and make them more cumbersome and ridiculous to use like in Fable 3. I mean everything the way it was in the first game, bigger world. Seriously. That would that's all it would take, and I'd be like, now that's a favorite game I want to play, fucking a. But yeah, uh, the other game that I saw that I was quite interested in was the uh, ridiculous DLC for Dead Rising Three. The problem with that is that Dead Rising Three is coming to Steam to PC this summer, and that DLC is going to come with it eventually. So, no real reason aside from Sunset Overdrive for me to pick up a Xbox One. I am, I will say, at the point where if I was gifted an Xbox One somehow, if somebody just gave it to me, I wouldn't try to sell it. Like, if I wanted the con... I, I've always said that if I won an Xbox One in some kind of, like, Nerd block it does their giveaways and stuff like that. Their monster blocks and stuff like that, and you enter to win them. And or if you're a subscriber, you're already entered to win them. So, um, 
they do the giveaways, and I always said that if I won an Xbox One on one of those or something like that, then I would probably just either I would probably just sell it because I was not interested in the Xbox One. But now that I've seen Sunset Overdrive, and you know, I would be kind of interested in checking out Project Spark, and I would be willing to wait another few years if I had an Xbox One to see if they were going to come out for more, with more games that I was interested in. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I, uh, that's all I can say, really, is that this conference brought me from the point where uh, I didn't want an Xbox One at all to, if I was given an Xbox One, I would not sell it, I would keep it, and I would use it from time to time. But unfortunately, that's the same level I was really at with the 360. Um, because I had a 360 for a little while, and I noticed that it just kind of sat there collecting dust, and I never played any games on it. Never really did anything on it, because the games that were coming out for the 360 were not games that I was interested in. And they were not games that I wanted to play. So, you know, I didn't spend much time playing games on the Xbox 360. In fact, more often than not, I used it to watch Netflix, because for a little while there, they had the market cornered on Netflix, so, uh, particularly Netflix streaming. So, uh, yeah, that's basically what I used it more, for, more than anything else. So, I, I don't know what to tell you. I, I'm at the same level now that I was with the 360, and that's not a good thing. But it is good that it... Um, that I, I'm getting less, uh, I don't know how to put it. It's a good thing that I've gone from not wanting the console at all to now if I had the console, I wouldn't get rid of it. I think that's a good thing. I think that's a start. So, you know, overall, I would say their conference wasn't that bad. But it wasn't my favorite conference this year. And... Um, Solidly, solidly in the middle was PlayStation. Now, I admit that the reason that I like the PlayStation conference is because I have a PlayStation 4. I already have the console requ required to play the games that they're showing me. So, obviously, I'm going to see these games and get a little bit more of a reward, a little bit more, in my brain, a little bit more of a sense of, oh, man, I get to play that. I get to play that. I get to play that. So, you know, if I had an Xbox One and I saw the Xbox conference and I saw all these games that I would be able to play, I might have liked it a little bit more. But um, that aside, I also just generally liked the games shown by Sony a lot more. Now, a lot of them are going to be cross-platform. A lot of the ones they showed are cross-platform titles. But they showed them. That's the important thing. Microsoft was trying not to show these. I don't know why. Because <laughs> they're like Far Cry 4. Why wouldn't you? Or I don't know. I get the sense that they just... Um, the companies involved weren't working with Microsoft as much as Microsoft would have liked. Because they recognize that like Sony is the new king on the block because Sony has more sales than Microsoft does on their console. And it happens. I mean, I noticed after the uh, Microsoft con conference or what, what? I can't remember what conference it was. But after one of the conferences, they had the um, Medal of Honor hardline thing or whatever it was, right? The, the beta thing on the rooftop and I'm watching that and I'm thinking to myself um, well this is interesting because they got these commentators talking about it uh, and on the uh, table on the thing on the table they show like on the table the middle water duh, 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 and then they show like uh, you know GameStop blah 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 PS4 Nothing. No mention of Microsoft on there whatsoever. So I'm noticing Microsoft's getting snubbed quite a bit this year at E3. 
I don't know what to think about that, but they're getting snubbed. So, I guess maybe that's why Sony had all the, uh, you know, the videos of the stuff that's going to be on both consoles, like Far Cry 4 and Batman and stuff like that. That just made me jizz in my pants. Uh... <laughs> There are a lot of games coming out for the PS4 that I really can't wait to get my hands on. Obviously, I'm more excited about No Man's Sky than anything else. But that being said, uh, No Man's Sky is going to be coming out for a while. Still, there are a lot of games coming out soon that I want to try. A lot of people are saying, oh, who cares if Sony is bringing out The Last of Us and Grand Theft Auto V, which, by the way, will also be on Xbox One. Uh, well, who cares if they're bringing that out? That's from last generation. It's like, well, for those of us who got the new generation and didn't have money to spend on the PS3 version of The Last of Us or on the PS3 version of Grand Theft Auto V, and who were waiting for this to come out on new generation consoles, now we have it. And believe me, there are a lot of us out there who did that, who specifically waited until it came out on next-generation consoles so that they could play it. That was the approach I took with The Last of Us. That was the approach I took with Grand Theft Auto V. I can't wait to play those games on a next-generation console. And I know that when it comes to GTA V, there are a lot of people who have done the same thing and feel the same way with the Xbox One. So anyways, there's that. Uh, there were a lot of games that I was interested in. I want to get Abzu. Uh, I want to get the First Light uh, Infamous DLC because I have Infamous Second Son and I loved that game. And the character in First Light is probably the most interesting character in the game. So I'm going to focus on her story. That's good. That's cool. Uh, there were just a lot of things I saw. The powers. A lot of people didn't understand what the whole powers thing was about because they don't know how awesome the powers graphic novel is. If you have not checked it out, fucking go check it out. Go read powers. Go buy it. Go fucking read it. You're going to love it. It's You're going to fall in love with this series, too. Bendis has been unwilling to... Uh, give up on this series and he's been unwilling to give it to a, a company that wanted to take his creative power away so the fact that he is giving this to sony means that he has the creative power he wanted and that's a good thing anyways i'm done to my last minute of video here so i'm gonna have to cut it off now thanks for watching catch you later peace